In a recent interview, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said he was not considering a prisoner exchange when it comes to the two Michaels being held and captive in China for Huawei executive CFO Meng Wanzhou. Now, to talk more about it is our political reporter, Brian Lilly. Brian, our PM, didn't even entertain the idea. So how are we going to get Michael Spaver, Michael Kovrig out of China? As you know, if they're convicted for spying, that's a death sentence in China. Yeah, and, and they're facing a justice system that has a 99% conviction rate. So, uh, look, I put in a couple of uh, questions to the prime minister that very same day. I asked him, uh, do you believe that China is in, you know, following the rule of law with these two men? And in a roundabout way, he said no. It wasn't a direct yes or no answer that he gave me, but these were some of the toughest words we've heard from the prime minister, that uh, China, you know, we live in a rules-based system and, and China isn't following that. Uh, he called them out for their claim that uh, that there's no connection between Meng Wanzhou, the Huawei CFO, and the detention of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor. He said they have made that connection from the beginning. And then later on in the news conference, as he's asked, will you consider a prisoner exchange as some people, including John Manley, Eddie Goldenberg, two longtime Kretchen people, um, as, as they have suggested? And, and he just said, no, we're not considering that. And he said it very sternly. And that may strike people as uh, a, an odd way to go, but think of what message that would send uh, and the danger that it would put other Canadians in around the world if you give in to kidnapping and ransom, which is effectively what's going on. China can call it what they will. These two men have been kidnapped and they're being held ransom in exchange for Meng Wanzhou. Our courts have found that she is, uh, there's enough evidence for her to stand trial on something that would be considered a crime in Canada as well. So, because there is in extradition, if what the other country wants you for wouldn't be considered a crime here, guess what? They don't send you. If it would stand up in a Canadian court, they'll send you. She is going through her appeals process while living in her multi-million dollar Vancouver mansion. Michael Kovrig, Michael Spavor have been kept in pretty bleak conditions in Chinese uh, detention. Lights on 24 uh, seven, torture, being used, all of that. I don't know how we get them back, but the prime minister tried playing very nice with China, cozying up to them. It didn't work. And this week, he started to show some spine. Uh, he's got the Americans on side, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo jumping in, and hopefully other allies start calling out China for what they are, kidnappers. Brian, a former Supreme Court justice says Ottawa has the authority to set Meng Wanzhou free. But really, what will that do with our relationship with the United States since she's facing fraud charges south of the border? Well, it, it would ruin our relationship with the United States, and, and it would also put to the lie the idea that uh, we are a rule of law nation. Yes, there is a provision that the justice minister can uh, just set someone free, uh, but we, we don't do that uh, unless there is an underlying reason, such as we don't think that there are that the charges they're facing are legitimate. We don't think that uh, uh, they're going to face uh, a, a real uh, and honest prosecution. Things of that nature would be good reasons for the justice minister to intervene. This decision, which was really spearheaded by former liberal justice minister Alan Rock, again, another one of these Kretchen guys coming back and, and trying to push this agenda of let's just let her go so we can get the uh, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor back. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why they're... They're playing at this. If, as you know, one suggestion John Manley had was we should have just looked the other way as she passed through the airport and say, oops, we didn't see her. If they had done that, all right, so be it. The Americans would have been annoyed. We would have had plausible deniability. To just say, we're going to let her go so that we can play politics, I think that that would be a, a bad move. So technically, it can be done. But as I said about uh, giving in to kidnapping, it, it serves the, sends the wrong message. It puts us at risk within every other dodgy country around the world. Brian, it turns out the Liberal MP arrested for charges of break and enter and assault over the Easter weekend also faced allegations of sexual harassment before the last election, but Justin Trudeau let him run anyway? Yeah, it, and in some ways, as I put in a column in the Toronto Sun this week, I think he shielded him. Um, and I don't say that lightly. Marwin Tabera is the the young NP. He was a man, who, you know, not a, a stellar resume. One of these guys who got the nomination in a riding that was hit or miss. Could have gone liberal or conservative. The liberals won it in 2015. While he's a first-time MP, he is accused of inappropriate touching and unwelcome sexual comments made towards a female staffer. 
Now, there's a process that's supposed to be in place in the House of Commons. It dates back to December 2014, where the Chief Human Resources Officer for the House of Commons gets involved and they have an investigation. Justin Trudeau called for this sort of thing when he was leader of the third party. As far as I can tell, he's never used it. He, like all the, and I'm not saying this is just a liberal thing, the NDP have done it. The Conservatives, we only know about them doing it with past MPs that I know of, but I'm sure there are current ones that it's been used on. They prefer an internal review, Hal. And so they did an internal review inside the party, said, yeah, some of this is substantiated, some of it's not. We don't know, was it the inappropriate touching? Was it the unwelcome remarks? Either way, if, the, if I was doing those things in, in my workplace, there would be a meeting with my boss, HR would be there, company lawyers may be there, and they'd have my union representative present. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know what the best outcome would be, but I just know it wouldn't be a good outcome for me if I was accused of those things and they were found to be substantiated. Trudeau let him run again. Now he's you know gone on and he, he's accused of breaking and enter, of criminal harassment and assault on the home of a man and woman that he stalked for three months. Wow. Now it's not just a rumor, but apparently US President Donald Trump's former national security advisor says that Trump really does not like Justin Trudeau. John Bolton says it's a genuine dislike for our prime minister. Now you've chatted with Mr. Bolton about this. Well, uh, I've chatted with John Bolton many times over the years, but not on this specifically. I'm trying to get an interview with him right now. I hosted John Bolton. He did a speaking tour in Canada, and I was hired to be the MC. And so we went to Calgary. We went to Toronto and I think Ottawa. Uh, I've interviewed him many times down in Washington, D.C. And he's a, he's a smart, thoughtful, engaging man who uh, loves his country and takes things seriously. So if he's talking this way about Trump in, in his book, all the different things he's saying, you have to at least weigh what he's saying uh, against what you're seeing. But when it comes to Trudeau, yeah, he doesn't like our prime minister. He finds him weak and ineffective. He you know, told uh, some of his supporters to go on TV and say bad things about him. It's an odd thing, but I mean, are you really surprised? Did you really expect that Donald Trump would like Justin Trudeau or that Justin Trudeau would like uh, Donald Trump? You know. It, they could have surprised us, I suppose. I mean, Justin Trudeau's former uh, top aide, uh, Jerry Butts, became uh, fast friends with Steve Bannon, uh, who used to be Trump's chief of staff, another man I know, uh, used to know quite well uh, down in Washington. Uh, in, I would never have put those two in the same room together, but Jerry and, and Steve hit it off amazingly well. Unsurprisingly, Trudeau and Trump did not. A story we recently covered on BCN is that the feds are extending CERB payments for another two months. But Brian, the parliamentary budget officer, says it will come with a hefty price tag. Oh, $17.9 billion for two months. Uh, not surprised. Uh, these are, you know, incredibly difficult times, strange times. And uh, $2,000 per person going out every single month, uh, millions of Canadians across the country. It has cost the Treasury vast sums. It was about $5 billion a month in extra payments that uh, the, the Harper government had to make during the 2009 economic crash. EI was using up more money than it had, and they had to take $5 billion a month out of the general treasury. So, uh, of course, inflation and more people um, out of work. So now we're looking at uh, you know an unemployment rate above 13%. We've got millions of people on CERB, so it's going to be that heavy price tag. But the prime minister doing this has, you know, upset some in the business community and some premiers are saying, well, wait a minute, you're actually making it more difficult to get people back to work. Because look, if, if you're working full time and only making minimum wage in pretty much any part of the country, you're going to make more money than you will on CERB. But you also have to go out to work. But if you're part time, maybe making you know, doing 20, maybe even 30 hours, you might not be making that. Or, you know, it's close enough that you say, ah, I'm just going to stay home. I don't feel safe. There's all sorts of reasons, but employers are saying it's making it more difficult to uh, to reopen as most of the country is reopening while uh, so many people are being told, you know, don't worry, here's two grand a month. The federal conservative leadership race continues, Brian, and there was some controversy involving the O'Toole and McKay camps. Can you explain? Oh, this is a bizarre one, isn't it? Uh, of course, they're considered the two front runners. If you listen to Peter McKay, he's got it sewn up. He's going to win on first ballot. If you listen to Aaron O'Toole, well, no, we're surging him and we're going to come from behind and win. 
Well, Aaron O'Toole has now come out with a pretty serious charge. In fact, they're asking for criminal charges against the McKay campaign and one of their regional organizers from Alberta saying that they stole videos. Um, you might recall there was a, a, a French CBC report about an internal Zoom call that was leaked to them. They think that it may have come from this same uh, download hack that they say happened, and they're pointing all the fingers at the McKay campaign, saying, uh, in fact, there was a, uh, a staffer for a Calgary MP, uh, Mr. McLean, who, he fired this young man who apparently gave the login info. Mr. McLean is backing O'Toole, um, and this young staffer, who at this point has not been identified to the best of my knowledge, uh, gave the McKay campaign the login information to go in and get these Zoom calls that were recorded. Of course, some of them are strategy meetings, some of them are with supporters. So you've got everything in there and you're giving away your campaign. It, it is a serious charge. The McKay camp says, not us, we had nothing to do with it. The O'Toole campaign says, we've actually got the digital fingerprints to prove it, we want police to investigate. You know, there's a quote in the Bible that says, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The liberals must be eating this up right now, infighting now within the, the leadership race. Come on, guys. Hey, it, you know, internal party politics is always some of the toughest. I've witnessed it in pretty much every party. I, I watched it with Mulcair and Layton. I've watched it with Cretchen and Martin. And uh, now, in the, uh, now in this, so far, Justin Trudeau doesn't have anyone trying to take him out. But we'll see, you know, we'll see if, if things start going badly for him, whether the knives come out. That's often what ends up happening to a political leader. You know, Sheer and Bernier as well, there was a little bit of uh, fighting going on between their, their camps too, remember that. Now, Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne has repaid mortgages he held with the state-run Bank of China, and he's refinanced them with the Canadian Bank. Brian, talk about why this is such a big deal. It's a big deal because he is Canada's representative and he has to deal with the Chinese government. The banks that he had the mortgages with was the state-owned Bank of China. So he effectively owed the Chinese government $1.2 million for mortgages on homes in London, England. The reason he said that he had the, the mortgages with them is that while he was uh, stationed in London, he wanted to buy a flat. And then I believe he bought a second one as an investment. He wanted to buy a flat, but they were not... Uh, doing mortgages through local banks in Britain to people who were on work visas, but the Bank of China would. So he got the mortgage with them. Uh, once it was reported, he said, no, 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 everything's fine. The prime minister defended him. Everything's fine. But the opposition party said, wait a minute, this puts him uh, in, in an odd position. He's vulnerable. He owes a foreign government more than a million dollars. He had to do something about this. So he's refinanced these mortgages with Canadian banks. So, you know, I don't know what where his credit card bills are or who finances his car, but he doesn't owe money for uh, these homes to the Chinese government anymore. And that's a good thing. Political reporter Brian Lilly with the Toronto Sun. Thanks again for your time today. Thank you, Hal. And behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless. Thanks so much for watching.